I think I can have influence on the deeper issues or the basic issues like unemployment, um, November the 11th, the Constitution and what happened there, I wouldn't want it repeated. So there's a few intense things I feel very strongly about and I think if they're produced again and again in a slightly different vein and with humour, not, not in a heavy handed way, I don't think cartoons should be meaningful. Cartoonists play a very important part in the age's general direction, which is to be pragmatic, uh, to be uh, not tied to any particular viewpoint, to embrace the middle ground, but also to put institutions to the test. We see our role as, as uh, informing the public, but particularly to, as by being an early warning system, by highlighting injustices or by, by revealing information to allow for a better informed public. Cartoonists give you that edge. They, they draw you into the story. I think Ron Tanberg is certainly the most outstanding cartoonist in Australia at the moment. Ron, do you think... Get out! That's not fair! Cut it out! Oh, <laughs> you rotten son. Humour is essential in a cartoon. I think there are a lot of cartoonists who um, seem to forget that. As I think you might expect a great uh, variety of responses to Tanberg. Uh, they're all strong responses. Uh, people either uh, think he's hilariously funny and very much to the point, and every now and then you get a few people who think he's outrageous. Uh, that because he is a political cartoonist, because he is making points about the current issues in the, the debate in society, uh, he's touching on some fairly exposed nerves from time to time, and there are people who think it's uh, outrageous for Tanberg to be drawing about, uh, to, to have cartoons about that chap who sat on the end of the, the Queen's bed uh, recently. They thought it was improper. We got a fairly heavy mail about Tanberg uh, and a lot of verbal response. But he has a powerful impact on people. There's no doubt that uh, you don't pick up the age in the morning and read it without looking at the Tanberg. Well, the other thing that I thought we ought to do is this Harold Costa Living story. What, have you read this? Hmm. Well, we've just. The daily pressure of trying to get out a good newspaper, which is not only a good newspaper, but it's better than the opposition. I mean, it, it is, after all, a competitive business. You like to think that uh, the paper that you edit, uh, the one that you've worked for for a number of years, is doing it better than anybody else. Good afternoon, Access. Could I have your name, please, sir? Access Age is, a, is a, a vital part because it's a communication point with the, with the readership and an, an instant, a sort of litmus test for the editor. Uh, it, it, it allows the reader to immediately react by telephone to stories of 
that morning. In other words, the views get into the paper the next day in, uh, about a running story. Well, uh, can I call it food for thought? Certainly. Uh, I wonder what the outraged animal lovers are having for dinner. I think that'll do. Well, I don't know that my cartoons reflect the country. I think they probably reflect a happy state of mind. Or uh, it's my contentment that comes from having a bit of country life, which when I, when I come to the city, I enjoy the excitement of things changing and altering. I prefer to live in the country because it's an ideal place to bring up children, I think. Really nice for the kids that are out there to be able to run around, to have their chooks and to have plenty of space to play around in without, without too much danger. Apart from the odd snake, of course. Oh, isn't it beautiful, Trude? It's a lovely little chick. Probably missing his mummy. Yeah. Oh, we've got a few eggs, Penny. I think what's wrong with Melbourne is perhaps what's the problem with most big cities nowadays, where the car is completely dominating the roads, where transport's a problem, pollution's a problem. but I'd like to sort of come into the city and meet all the neurotics and talk to them and find a bit of conflict and change. Hi, Ron, how are you? Oh, fantastic. What do you got for Oddspot? I've got a bad one here from Dublin, Ron. They're uh, talking about bringing in the death penalty in Ireland for attempted suicide. Hmm. Did that come on the ground or did you make that one up? Well, we've got to worry about the it's integrity. It's a trade secret. Integrity of the age, you know. All right. Um, well, if I get desperate, I might do something on it. Shoot, please. Shoot, Ove. I need to attend evening conferences because it gives me a sort of a new stimulus. I think it's a mistake to sort of be remaining with thoughts that you've developed over the years. You're not growing. If you've got to have continual influences or new things happening to to keep you sort of on edge and going and changing. Yeah, I don't want to bore people. I don't want to keep them sort of thinking, oh, well, that's predictable. Now, there's an old, old saying on newspapers, get it first and get it right. And that's still largely what it's about. But in a paper like The Age, which is more than most papers in Australia concerned with issues, not just news, but with the debate that goes on in society about changes in society, not just political change, but social change, economic change, it's not just a matter of getting it first and getting it right, it's also a matter of getting it balanced, making certain that you've got it in perspective, that you aren't over-stressing something, over-dramatising something. Got a moment, John? I test out my cartoons to make sure that I'm still got my feet on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's good. There's another one, can it? Yeah. There's one we can't use. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can use it. No, I think it was hey, we'll get advice court. on it, though. It's terrific. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we'll get advice yeah. on it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's suggesting that he's opened well, his mouth already. Yeah. The difference between a politician and a member of the public is that you can send up the politician and get away with it. You can send up the member of the public and you can be in court for libeling him. That's the one we can't, that's one we can't What's use. What's that for? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <coughs> but I think that's, that's okay. That could go on one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Too right. I think cartoonists in general do have a greater freedom to comment. Uh, and it's, it's largely because, uh, they're making basic points very simply. Uh, now, this is a paper which traditionally has uh, uh, published a number of columnists in the past. In fact, I wrote a column for it for years. 
In which, uh, within the limits of the laws of libel and defamation, and uh, that elusive quality called taste, we've allowed our columnists to say what they felt ought to be said about the current issues, current debate in society. They don't represent editorial policy in the paper. Tonight. Had some pork pie earlier on. My expectations were met. You mean you weren't disappointed? <laughs> but then you didn't expect pork pie. Yeah, I'll have some pork pie. Um, I remember this one. <laughs> Mike Learning, I find Mike it could help. We often go down to the Gage Canteen, and uh, in the canteen we just relax and unwind. We sort of support each other just by friendship and uh, we feel for each other. We're not envious of each other. We, uh, yeah, just, just we talk to each other very honestly and we want to help each other. Um, do you think we should eat animals? Ooh. Or do you think we should Certainly. kill them? Do you think we should kill them first? <laughs> oh, eat, eat, them. eat them. What about ducks? Oh, I like to kill them sort of wriggling in the mouth a bit. Mm. Yeah, why? That might be an idea for... Uh, there's access to people complaining about the killing of animals. I find access an important area for my cartoons because it gives me an idea on what people are thinking outside. I find it stimulating to get their reaction. <laughs> what about the rabbits? Mm, <coughs> I love killing rabbits. <laughs> I do. Uh, uh, I like eating them too. I mean, I mm. reckon if you kill them, you should be prepared to eat them. Uh, I, I like cuddly little lamb chops. Mm. Mm. I have to leave the rabbits out of it. You've got to react a lot with your gut reaction to things, the gut feeling. Often the funniest ideas are a combination of two often contradictory things and they're thrown together to make sense. A newspaper reflects, must reflect change in society and to some extent lead it so that the whole group of people who are within the age uh, must maintain contact with the community. I think Ron Tanberg, perhaps better than anybody, uh, is able to sense attitudes within the community. I have to be very committed to my work and very committed to the newspaper. I have to believe in it. If I'm going to give my utmost, I have to feel comfortable and feel I'm, I believe in the place. doesn't sort of come always when you want it to come. I think some of my best cartoons come out of a real time restraint where I've got 15 minutes to think of it. Because that really makes me home in. I can't get carried away with peripheral things. I have to just sort of say what's essential and get it out. I haven't got time for politeness. And that, that's probably when I sometimes produce my best. Straight face, you feel? <laughs> uh, yeah. Clive? There's people in the age that are really helpful to me. That uh, yeah. without them I'd be in trouble. There are some news editors and night editors who are people who understand that I'm trying, that I'm 
but I'll give them my best and they try and produce. And they're very sympathetic and helpful. Okay, <laughs> have you got another one for one? Yeah, I'm working on one. I, I think I might have. Okay. That night, uh, the news started to change and it uh, placed a stronger emphasis on Fraser had been told not to have an early election because obviously members of his party uh, were a little concerned about losing their seats. Uh, but Malcolm's obviously just concerned with winning, but uh, with the latest uh, cost of living increases, uh, obviously his chances of winning are getting very, very slim. So I went on that, and that's how I interpreted it. We need at this stage, Creighton, as uh, blocks for page one and page three. Okay, what do we got? Well, the best lot are both from the Brisbane area. One is a um, Russian tanker or carrier, which is cut in half a uh, fishing boat. There are the two fellows that uh, were rescued. I don't see my work as serious art, but I think it's more relevant than some of the stuff you see hanging in galleries. Malcolm Fraser keeps reoccurring because um, yeah, well, he's been around a while, so uh, he'll stop reoccurring when he's not around. Very good story break in Canberra. Yep. Um, a parliamentary committee has been told that uh, a document outlining the full extent of many fraud had the guts cut out of it before it was sent to McKellar. Yeah. So yep. we, we Do you want to put down one? Yeah. We'll have to leave cancer there, won't we? Because Yeah, she well she's very sensitive about the cuts we make in that. Okay. So if we right. leave cancer there then we can put the Medi fraud down there. Right. -o. Now that leaves us with illustrations there and there and the two Tanbergs are on either side of the page. <laughs> March is a fairly dry month with average rainfall of less than 40 mm with only nine days of rain. April wet is similar. No wonder that October Pennant the play is frequently hit by rain. Hannah, look, there are two Tanberg cartoons and they're different sizes. The Fraser one goes with the pole story over there. Have you got that? Let's look at it. Yeah, that's the one. Stick him down there, would you? Have you got the other one? Yeah, what about? Uh, the recession, BHP and the recession. Yeah. That's it. That goes up there where he's slugging the story. Hannah, have you seen the main plate yet? No, uh, yes, I've got it here. Perhaps we better stick that down, sir. We're just about ready. Clive, we've got a terrific story out of Canberra. Oh, uh, a middle-ranking middle official has said there's corruption in the health department. So uh, oh, 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 I've done an A copy of four pars. Into the... Uh, and we'll, yeah, book put it into that and yeah. we'll make it the lead on the next edition. The lead or the lead out? Ah, the lead. The lead, yeah. Because the editor is responsible uh, to the managing director and ultimately to the board for the editorial content and performance of the paper, the editor's got to decide whether the cartoons get run or not. And, uh, it has to be said, from time to time, Ron and I have had our little run-ins. I've, uh, told him on a couple of occasions that I don't think the cartoon worked. Uh, that I didn't think it was funny. 
or I couldn't get the point. But there, is a, there are problems about taste. I've had a few arguments with Tanberg. I've had a few arguments with the other cartoonists on this paper from time to time about it. That's an interesting story, the one about the dingo. Here's the front page on that day. You probably noticed there's no cartoon on it. Uh, of course, well, I got slightly irritated over the decision for it not to go on page one. Uh, <coughs> here's the actual cartoon here. The editor and I had a difference of opinion over it. I felt that it was suitable for page one, and uh, I think it's probably the urgency that cartooning has, particularly doing news cartoons the way I do, that if a cartoon's designed for page one, and it's suddenly decided about 10.30 that it's not to go in, and there's no longer a cartoon on page one, which is my job to produce, I feel that, um, well, it's naturally for me to get irritated and annoyed. At first, when the editor decided not to have it on page one, I assumed that it was on a matter of taste for some reason. But apparently it was a news judgment, um, which naturally I disagreed with. And, uh, but I feel, I feel most editors, in fact every editor, likes to maintain complete control of the paper and uh, can easily feel threatened if a cartoonist feels he has more say in what goes on the front page than he has. largely responsible for the overall image of the age. That responsibility is to make certain that the balance is right, that the mix is right. There are the first Creighton. Okay. Well, um, it's been a good development on the uh, Medi fraud <laughs> story. Well, it strikes me it's a better story now than the poll story because we've, been, that, yeah. we've been running with this all uh, for weeks now yeah. and all we're doing is topping it up. Yeah, right. I mean, I think we ought to lead with, with this. We ought to push that up the top. Right. To keep producing stuff all the time is significant in the age because it keeps the reader looking for something all the time. To stir people, to get them thinking, um, perhaps to get them to read the stories. People that read the age are reasonably educated people, reasonably thinking people. They're not satisfied with just pictorial shallow effects, which some papers might produce. I don't think they're always satisfied, but they do want something more. Then they go 136 yellows, 92 blue, right? And uh, 123 yellows. I'm going to go 229 blue. All right. Yeah. Uh, good delegates. Warrigal trucks. Their Warrigal trucks come in on uh, eight, nine, and ten. They're going to come in on three shoots tonight, mate. Right out. Right out, guys. I've got a mess. Hang on. What have I done here? Right.
I need to keep changing and growing because if I don't keep ahead of the public, I'm going to fail as a cartoonist. I have to keep one step ahead of them. If I'm going to get one step behind, I might as well be Prince Philip. <laughs>